Okay, x -traders, and we are back with another Thinkorswim video. And let me switch over to this presentation that I was working on just to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing today because uh, originally we started with part one, uh, which is this video that I'm going to link to right here, which was a very simple review of a script, which all, did, all it did was calculate the average volume, right? Uh, so it calculated the average volume of, of a particular ticker, and we used it. It was a very simple, short, four-line script. We used it as an example of how to write a script and how certain things worked, such as keywords and functions, but very, very, very loosely. So uh, it was a very quick, uh, you know, basic 101 introduction to think script. Okay, and uh, after that. What I did was put together this, you know, presentation because I was working on part two, which is going to be intermediate. And so I kind of, you know, threw around some ideas in my head. Well, what should we really, uh, you know, cover in order to get started? And I came up with this, you know, the main screen of ThinkScript. And uh, we kind of jumped into talking about certain key or reserved words. So if you recall, quite a while ago, I, um, I came up. Uh, I uploaded two videos which were related to strategy, investment strategy, right? Um, basically uh, telling you how to know yourself and to, to basically follow some rules which were uh, very common in trading. Uh, but then uh, there are other things that you need to figure out about yourself in order to become a better trader. Well, uh, some of that information, or some of those topics that we covered, basically uh, were focused on how to have certain information at hand. Okay, and that is some of the uh, that is the idea behind today's video is how to use Thinkorswim to make sure that you're covering some information that you should have at your fingertips, such as if you're trading a particular ticker in the investment strategy videos. If you recall, here's that first video, by the way, and then the second video I created uh, was, I believe, due to the fact that the first video kind of ran long. And I threw together a um, PowerPoint presentation, and here is the second uh, video. And I even made a third one where we delved exactly in, or precisely into risk management. So here is that video on risk management. So those three videos on investment strategy and risk man management are focused on having information at your fingertips. And uh, that is some of the stuff we're going to be looking at today. If you're trading a particular stock or ticker, whether it is... Uh, you know, information technology or materials or financial, you need to know what's going on, not just with that ticker, you also need to know what's going on in the industry, and you also need to know what's going on in the, uh, the different market sectors, uh, such as the S&P 500 indices usually cover. So, I'm going to switch over here to Thicker Swim, and I want to bring your attention to uh, the ticker tape, which is the first one I want to cover. So when you first start out in Thinkorswim, uh, this is the screen that you get. And it's not very useful. After that, you kind of migrate over to these other tabs and you kind of forget about it. But I want to make sure to bring your attention down here to this ticker tape because this is very useful. Now, uh, you can set this to whatever you want. And let's just say that we want to set it to the S&P 500 sector indices. Right? Now, it's not very useful because the indices have a weird uh, symbol. So let's go ahead and actually choose the S&P 500 itself. So there's uh, a scrolling ticker tape of the S&P 500 stocks and what they're doing during the day. And if you'll see over here to the right side, there's this little icon where you can detach this window. Right. So if you click on that, it kind of pop out and then you can kind of mess with it and move it around, leave it down there at the bottom. And then you can go back to your market watch list or whatever. And then you can have that ticker tape um, uh, icon or gadget moving around at the bottom. And you can just adjust your Java window so that you can just sort of see it. Okay, so this is uh, this is very useful because if you're trading a particular ticker, that, then this is one way to have uh, relevant information, related information, at your fingertips. Okay, so that's the ticker tape uh you know, tip or, or, or trick that we can use in uh, Think or Swim. Uh, now let's go back to charting, of course. In charting, which is one of the most used features, um, let's say that we have this chart here. This is a Tesla chart. So let's go ahead and take a look at this downtrend right here. 
Okay, this is over the course of a few days. This is the five day, 15 minute. So let's pretend that we were back here somewhere and we were looking at this particular trend line starting up at this high of 299.99 and we drew back at that time in that time period we drew this you know this particular trend line right here okay so this hasn't happened yet all right now what we want is we want to be able to uh, we want to be alerted in the case that Tesla breaks above this trend line now this is not a, a particular uh, price level okay we're not drawing a price level at 265.30 right as in right here we're not drawing a straight line and asking us to be alerted if this breaks above 265.30 uh, but we can also work with a trend line so we can select that trend line right click it and we can create alert with drawing all right so this is going to tell us if uh, the Tesla crosses above or below that particular trend line. All right, how cool is this? We could cross right above. This means Tesla entry, right? And you can go ahead and set it, you know, set your notifications as you wish, you know, play your sound, whether it's the bell or whatever. Um, and you can have it, you know, send your, your push notification to your mobile uh, and whatever you want. And you just go ahead and click create and there it is. And then that is, um, you see here's the alert over here so that is pertaining to this trend line which you can see oh I didn't want to mouse I didn't want to click on it sorry about that all right if you hover over it it tells you that that is trend line number five okay and when we right click we went over to the create uh, alert with drawing it was telling us that we were going to be creating this crossing above because we selected above trend line number five okay so now that alert has been created and here it is right Okay, and you can just, oops, did not mean to create that other trend line. Let's go ahead and just delete that, remove that. Okay, and you can go ahead and delete it if you want. Uh, and there it's telling you what the alert uh, that we created is uh, supposed to do. All right, so that is a pretty interesting feature uh, because it works with you know trend lines, it works with uh, channels, it works with a bunch of stuff. So. All right, now let's go ahead to uh, dividend adjust. This is only useful uh, if you are using a dividend paying stock. In the case of Tesla, for example, that doesn't make a difference. Let's go ahead and look at PFE. Of course, it's not gonna work on the 15 minute. It doesn't pay dividends on a 15 minute chart. Let me go ahead and uh, look at one year. All right, there we go. So there's that old line down here. Now look at this chart. It goes up to 54.1. If we remove that, set that to none, all right, there's the chart. Hit apply. All right, you see how that moves to 54.93? All right, let me do that again. The high is 54.93 if you don't adjust for dividends. If you adjust for dividends, then the high is now 54.11, okay? So adjust for dividends is important if you're looking at your particular charts because if you're gonna be, you know, uh, uh, trying to calculate, and this might come up in one of the dividend uh, scripts that we're gonna be looking at, if a, a particular stock will return value, a certain value, 10%, 15%, based on price action, but if you adjust that, to include the dividend yield as well, then that means that those values will change. Okay, so the default I believe is special, um, but you know you can just leave it at all. If you don't really trade dividend stocks, then it won't really make a difference. But um, I just wanted to make sure that we covered that because uh, I use it for some of my dividend stock uh, watch lists. Okay, so we covered the ticker tape. You know information about different sectors. We covered alerts from charts, which is information about a particular chart and if it's doing something with uh, uh, a, uh, a trend line or a channel or some other kind of indicator that you've uh, thrown on there. And then the last one is grid layouts. All right, so, and that's where I wanted to cover S&P sectors. Grid layouts is this feature over here on the top right. Okay, so what this does is it allows you to, um, 
view charts side by side. So let me switch over to this other uh, pre-made uh, video that I have on this because this is uh, really interesting and it's one of the most useful features out of the four. So I'll switch over to that video and then... Now obviously you probably figured out by now that you could have two windows side by side, right? And then you can have AT&T on this one and you can have the S&P 500 uh, communications sector on this one, which is great. <clears throat> But sometimes you actually, you see how this is getting jumbled up and it's really hard to see indicators down here, right? So uh, the more charts you add to this, because let's say that you wanted to add, so you can go ahead and add a third one. Let's say that you also wanted to look at information technology sector, right? Number 45. Sure, why not? Let's look at number 45. So SP 500 number... 45. All right. So we let's pretend this is Monday. This is, you know, this uh, chart of the S&P 500 uh, communications is telling us that this has run up. Let's, you know, you can't even see, you know, previous days now. So you can't really tell, but this might be uh, resistance right there. So it might be on its way down. Um, here you see the S&P 500 also the uh, IT sector on its way down down and let's say that we put this up because we believe that AT&T participates uh, sort of or is benefited uh, by companies in both sectors. AT&T sells to companies uh, in the uh, sells services to companies in the IT sector. All right, that's great. So we want to be able to keep these charts and possibly throw on like a NASDAQ or, you know, or, or just the S&P 500. The thing is that it, as you can see, it's getting really crowded and really hard to read. So what you can do is, you see how you have three windows right here? And you have this, uh, I believe it's called the hamburger icon, right? Which is the three lines and the three dots. So you can go ahead and click on this and you can maximize, right, that cell. So we're going to maximize the S&P 550, which is the communication services industry. And there it is. That is the S&P 550. Now you see what happened up here now. Now you have... You still have your three cells, but you have the red, uh, the, the first cell, the first box highlighted in red with the red cube, and you get these back and forth arrows. This is really neat because then you can move between each one of those, and you see the, how it basically switches and tells you which chart you're actually on. And now we're in the information technology sector, right? And you go back, you can look at the AT&T, and you can see what it's doing. All right, so this is very useful when you're navigating through a whole bunch of different um, related tickers, right, that you want to keep an eye on during your trading day. So this is one of my favorite features on um, on a uh, on a platform like this because, for example, I use TradingView, and with TradingView, uh, you can have, unless you have like the paid subscription, you can't really have so many open windows. It used to be three open windows for three different charts. Now you can only have two, right? Um, of course, it's... You know, I'm using it as a free service, whereas this is a paid, a paid service, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, I like this very much, very much so. You can even make this wider if you just like pop that open. All right, so this is a very useful feature as well. And that is basically what uh, I wanted to go ahead and cover in this quick tips video. And it should really be very uh, a very short video for you guys. And so I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I promise that in the next video I will have the uh, the next uh, chart the next uh, scripts that we were going to be talking about which were the monthly and yearly average return column scripts as well as the price action plus dividend uh, which is a chart label data that we're going to be looking at and that's where we're probably going to be um, using that uh, the adjust for dividends feature of thinkorswim all right so I'll see you in the next video where we'll cover uh, this information and I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any uh, any questions or doubts, don't let them um, don't let them pile up. So I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a good one.